This video is not about the Lakers. LeBron breaking the scoring record will be the highlight of the Lakers season. Earth to Laker Nation, it's over y'all. This team's title window has closed for good. And LeBron's injury wasn't affecting the outcome of the Lakers season. It more so sped up the inevitable because this team wasn't winning even when he was on the court. You can add new faces into the lineup, get rid of the supposed problem Russell Westbrook, problem in air quotes. You can deny it all you want, but the mirage will soon fade. And I take no pleasure from delivering this message. I'd love nothing more than to see LeBron and AD win another one. But this isn't a championship roster. Before the trades, this wasn't a championship roster. Last year wasn't a championship roster. The LA Lakers stopped being contenders after August 11th, 2020 when they won the NBA championship. This video is not about the Lakers. Rob Palenka struck gold trading for Anthony Davis when AD got sick of wasting his career in New Orleans and they had to give up a haul just to get him here, getting rid of Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart and picks. It always feels like the Lakers can somehow find a star to get their hands on at the most opportune times. But you have to applaud their front office being able to pair LeBron James with another top five player at that time. And the Anthony Davis swap worked. They won a ring. Doesn't matter what happens after. The moment you win a ring, the rest is justified. The Lakers sacrificed their future so they could bring Anthony Davis in, pair him alongside LeBron, and compete for a championship. And it worked. They won a ring with Anthony Davis, so that trade was successful regardless of the current state of this team. This video is not about the Lakers. Now the Russell Westbrook trade, not justifiable at all. It was a questionable move from the get-go, just considering the fit. Russ was shipped from Washington, still as the excellent player he'd always been, but his play style doesn't complement LeBron in any way. He's not a shooter. He's not an off-ball threat, and he can't create a jump shot out of thin air. Those are the guards that succeed playing with LeBron. Because LeBron always runs the offense, and Russ his whole career had played that same role. Even if you ignored that concern, no one took into account aging. Palinka never considered that Brody was 30-something with a lot of mileage already. Great players reach their limits, and they start to decline. It's a natural process. This was a Hollywood trade. It paired one legend alongside two other ones under the bright lights of Los Angeles. A Hollywood trade, but not a blockbuster trade. That's a trade that would see the Lakers become contenders sitting on top of the conference, not fighting for a playing spot. And with the way things have panned out, this is the end of the road. We all know it. Lakers fans do too, even the delusional ones. This video is not about... Okay, I'll stop. Every time you open Instagram, or Twitter, or Facebook, TikTok, etc., you will stumble upon a post talking about the Lakers or the Warriors. Then you'll shut your phone off, turn on your TV, and see Skip Bayless or Stephen A. Smith blabbering about LeBron or Steph or Ja Morant. Ja gets a lot of attention across social media, which is surprising because he isn't a top 5 player, he's flashy but so is Anthony Edwards and Zion Williamson, but they don't get millions of likes quite like Ja does, which is so interesting. But anyways, you can't escape these teams. And the reason is simple, engagement. They're the two most followed teams in the NBA and they pull in majority of the revenue amongst all 30 teams. Only a child would be confused as to why they're always talked about. But guess what? Eventually, despite the popularity of both teams, people get sick of hearing about them especially the Lakers, and the people on TV will not stop doing that. On a slow news day, I wouldn't even be shocked to find Kendrick Perkins on TV debating whether the Lakers' new ball boy hire can push them over the edge. At least with the Warriors, you have something to talk about. The Warriors have clawed back to the sixth seed. People want to hear about their miraculous turnaround, so why must we be subjected to discourse about an 11th seed? And we do know why they do it, I just explained it, but it doesn't lessen our frustration. There's so many credible journalists, air quotes again, who aren't journalists, nor are they credible. Let's not forget Stephen A. Smith, ESPN's most distinguished journalist, went on live television multiple, multiple times and cited fake quotes in his arguments. Fake quotes from one source. I'll just play the clip. Especially when Kyrie looked him in the face according to reports and told him you washed up. His source in question? 
Balls Back Sports. I'm just gonna play it safe and censor the name because with YouTube, you don't know what they're gonna take down. But it doesn't take too much brain power to realize how ridiculous it is that Stephen A. Smith used B Sag Sports as a credible source, according to reports. This dude, he is an industry vet. The industry vet. Stephen A. Smith is the Michael Jordan of sports TV personalities. He is ESPN's franchise player. He quoted the same fake source multiple times. That's the most glaring sign of ineptitude and a lack of journalistic integrity. I understand quoting a fake source once. I mean, you'd think all those producers would have fact checked beforehand, but whatever, it happens. Unless this man doesn't script anything and just free balls everything. Which wouldn't shock me because the Larry Bird, the Stephen A's, Magic Johnson, Skip Bayless, I know in my heart he does not script any of the wild takes he says. I genuinely believe this man loves two things in life, the Cowboys and hating on LeBron. Nobody's reining in a guy who tweets about LeBron this much. Go on his page right now, I guarantee he has something from the day relating to LeBron. He is comically anti-LeBron. Like he found a way to hate on LeBron by saying Jordan makes better shoes than him. The media will drag on about LA's chances of making the playoffs. I understand that the Lakers are who they are, so you have to talk about them. They're the most historic franchise in the league alongside the Celtics. Yeah, 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 we get it. But when you go on these debate shows and start preaching about how D'Angelo Russell and Jared Vanderbilt could catapult the Lakers title bound, you're misleading the audience. And it's hilarious hearing these media heads talk about Vando and his versatility on defense, even though if you've watched the Timberwolves, you've been knew he was like that. But guys only become these shining stars when they make it to the Lakers. These shows don't have any productive discussions about basketball. It's all about audience retention. They will do whatever it takes to milk the most views they possibly can. And you can't tell me thought-provoking quality sports content doesn't garner viewership because you have guys like JJ Redick proving you can attract eyes to your content without sacrificing your credibility. Why can't the general population be exposed to teams like Sacramento or the Cleveland Cavaliers? And they have a vicious cycle where they'll slander a guy then turn the tables once everyone is against them. For example, Russell Westbrook who always got unwarranted slander because the Lakers are still trash even though he's gone. They'll put a spotlight on load management and all they'll do is negatively talk about the ones who are missing games. But they won't talk about a guy like Anthony Edwards who's played every single game this season for Minnesota and he played 72 games each in his first and second year. That dude is an Iron Man. He is the exception, not the majority, but shouldn't that be even more of a reason to give him his praise? If D'Lo went on like a 5 game, 20 point scoring streak, they'll talk about him the whole day. But Donovan Mitchell and Damian Lillard have to drop 70 to get even one segment. It's always negative topics. Does this guy have what it takes to win a championship? How will the playoffs affect his legacy? Who has the most to prove? Does this guy deserve to be MVP? Has this player fallen off? And they'll tackle all of those in one single day. And somehow Skip Bayless or Stephen A. Smith will find a creative way to talk the same thing over and over again. Honestly, that's a skill. Hey, remember when I was talking about the Lakers? They consistently draft outstanding players. And this started before Palinka's tenure. From 2014, these are the guys the Lakers have drafted. Some of them went on to be really good players and never even suited up in purple and gold. Julius Randle, current All-Star, former MIP, and is currently leading the New York Knicks who are red hot. And that statement does bring a smile to my face. Brandon Ingram, former All-Star and has hit a new gear since his return from injury. Kyle Kuzma, who wasn't lying about the pressures of playing in LA, because the moment he leaves, he looks like an all-star. Jordan Clarkson, former sixth man of the year, never saw a shot he didn't want to shoot. D'Lo, who really took off when he was traded to Brooklyn, that was the high point and since then he hasn't played at an all-star level, but still an okay player. Lonzo Ball, who's been sidelined for pretty much two years with a nasty knee injury, but when he was on the court, he showed plenty of promise. A tall true playmaking point guard who's a very good defender and he was shooting the ball at an elite clip. Yeah, the guy who was mocked by everyone for his jump shot was shooting seven and a half threes at 40% a game. Let's hope he can come back. And the list goes on. Zubak, Josh Hart, Larry Nance, they drafted Jaden McDaniels and DeAndre Hunter and traded them. Both of them would start on his current team. 
they've had all these young talents who were all let go of majority through trade for depreciating assets. Okay, I hope by now y'all understand why I'm doing a segment on the Lakers in a video about the media constantly talking about the Lakers. I opened the video doing exactly what they do, saying the same damn things that have been said all year about the Lakers. The media is on to something. Nothing I opened with was groundbreaking. This is all stuff that's been regurgitated thousands of times already. The Lakers sucked because they had an old team with no real talent on the bench. An aging superstar in Russell Westbrook was not going to work out there. And trading him for mediocre pieces isn't going to alter the inevitable. The nature of seeding, someone must be bad. That's the Los Angeles Lakers. There's no secret formula to remedy this. So what's there to talk about? Nothing. That's my whole point. There's nothing I can tell you that can fix the Lakers. There is no secret prospect. There is no uphill battle they can climb just by getting it together. No, the team just isn't good enough. That's just what it is. I talked about nothing just like these media outlets do. This video is not about the Lakers, but I still found a way to talk about them. Thanks for watching.